I'm going to put the shutter release lever on here now. I'll give it a little wipe of lebdin and paste on the pivot point there. So it's got a very small spring on the back here to make sure that, that connects up correctly. Then this fits over the post here. And as I work this, you'll see it activates the T lever. So the shutter stays open until I move the lever again. I'm going to put a little wipe of molybdenum and paste on some of those working surfaces. Just to ensure that they move smoothly. That seems fine. And you'll see that the lever interacts with this catch here. That's the catch that releases the main lever to drive the shutter. Alright, that's working nicely. Carry on with the rest of it. The return spring for that shutter release can go in and I'm just going to put the high speed spring in, the 500th of a second speed or 400th of a second speed spring in this case. So I put that in place there in the shutter. Here's the return spring lever for the shutter. I'll get this hooked into place. Set that on its post. The end of it interacts with the shutter release lever there. And the spring needs to be tucked down into the case. This is quite a strong spring. So now the shutter release has quite a pronounced spring action to it. Again I'll just put a little wipe of molybdenum and paste in there where it, that lever interacts. That's moving nicely. Now this little block which would be the cable release if the shutter was so equipped goes in here that's held in place with a countersunk head screw I can just get that seated correctly It's looking good. Right, so that piece is in place. We had one more strange piece on here. That's this little catch here, which sat on that post. I'll tuck that into position. It might have been better to get that in place before I put the other one in. Let's get that tucked in there. Yes, I think I would have been slacking that screw off here myself. A bit more working room. That's it, it's in. Check that the spring's tucked down. Get the spring in there, the screw in there. Sorry, you're not seeing much of it. Non transparent fingers. 
set jamming on something. Hang on. Not got that seated correctly. Get that seated, that's correct, that's better. That action looks right. Okay, well that is pretty much ready to have the main lever put in now. There's a couple of areas I want to wipe some molybdenum paste. First, this part, that's the lever that engages or disengages the pallets. Here, this is the lever that is forces the gears across this controls the amount of engagement here controls what shutter speed you'll end up getting. I'll put a little touch on that catch and here and here on there that looks fine let's have a look at this this is the main lever so where do I want to lubricate here well the inside edge where it's going to run around the lens tube here I'm using molybdenum paste and the outside edge in various places where it interacts with the catch here and here it interacts with this lever here on the shutter now this piece is called the bird pawl just making sure that the head end of that looks good now the, the tail end of this is, is bent that's got quite a pronounced bend in it. Now, that may or may not be intentional. And so I'm not going to change that or straighten it out. I'm just rubbing a bit of molybdenum paste on that spring where it's going to rub against the centre of the case. And see if I can get this all seated. This little catch here is quite heavily sprung loaded. It needs to be pulled back towards the centre as it goes in so that it'll engage with the wheel on the self-timer. Okay, so first I'll hold back the pallets, pull this lever across, release the pallets, and that just gives me clearance here to get things in place. Hold that lever back. Well, we want to be here. catch back oh this spring's not tucked down here correctly let's get that in there and that's fallen out of place What's holding me up? Not that, not that, not that. That's correct. Pull that back to the rest position and hook the main spring over the post.
it feels pretty good. I'll put the main speed settings cam plate in place. So I'm taking some molybdenum paste, running it around the centre. Around the cam surfaces here, this is where it interacts with the speed the retard gear train. And in this section is where it interacts with this high speed spring. It doesn't need much. It's important to have some lubrication. Right, now to get this in position. I've got to make sure I don't get my B-lever jammed up anywhere. Get this around the right way. Get it underneath that lever there. Yeah. We seated. The shutter appears to be working. Let's try it on the slower speed. Well, I've got that set too. Just seeing where my mark would be, and that must be B, and then that would be one there. That doesn't want to run down. Let's try it on a half second. I think a half second would be about here. It really doesn't want to run down. Let's try it on a faster speed. It's like the main lever is not not causing the speed train to push back out of the way correctly. There could be some friction somewhere that everything appeared to work smoothly. About the faster speeds. Now where did I think my alignment mark was? I th thought it would be I think there might even be a dot there let's try this at a 50th of a second that's either a 50th, that's a 25th yeah these speeds are just not right see are we getting a an action like B there almost Oh, it's a very slow action. A high speed spring would be engaged at this point. Our speed train is effectively disengaged. That looks credible. If we drop off the high speed spring, the 200th of a second, that looks credible. This would be about 100 possible this be a 50th and there it sticks now the speed train is not holding this back something else is holding it back I'm looking suspiciously at the cocking lever here It's quite badly scuffed up um, and I wonder whether it's actually dragging on something. No, that's not it. But something is causing the shutter to stick. The main lever is just simply not moving correctly. It's like it doesn't have enough spring tension to move. Now 
interesting. Well, as you can see, the shutter now works normally. So what did I do? Well, the first thing I looked at was the retard gear train. My concern there was that although it moved smoothly after it had been cleaned and everything appeared to work normally, that um, perhaps the adjustment was out. Perhaps somebody had adjusted it uh, previously and it didn't work correctly. But I had a close look and the screw heads were the key. Typically the screws that hold down the retard gear train, uh, the screw heads uh, get damaged if somebody's been in there loosening and tightening those screws because typically you have to, you getting the speed adjustment correct is a backwards and forwards trial and error business and you end up making a lot of adjustments until you get things right. There was no sign that those screws had seen any undue use at all which meant that no one had been in playing with the speed train. So I was left scratching my head and I thought well I had to look further afield and it, I remembered something. When I was looking at the uh, main lever and I described the bird paw on the back of the main lever and the head of the bird paw uh, that's where you put your lubricant, some lubricant on those points and I said that the tail of the bird paw that was distorted and I said that I didn't want to change the shape of that to square it up because it might, might have been like that for a purpose as occasionally things are. But I remembered that bird paw and so I had a look at it and um, thought about the symptoms and straightened it up and lo and behold the shutter worked fine. Now the tail of the bird paw runs in a little track on the mechanism plate and because it was misshapen basically it was dragging in there and it wasn't moving freely at all there should have been some clearance so that was the secret with that so as I say now I have the shutter back together it's in a good state it also appears to be working nicely and I'm ready to carry on and close up the rest of it which basically means here putting the stuff back on the front there were a couple of little external levers that went on down here and then we had the frame that hold the rangefinder components but I'm very relieved to say that the shutter itself works fine the self timer on it works fine and in fact I can demonstrate that to set this to a useful shutter speed, a fifth of a second will do nicely. This little button here, you hold that back and you can pull the cocking lever around further than you otherwise would be able to. And when you press the release lever, the self timer starts to run down. And you can probably hear that buzzing away. And then it'll fire the shutter. There you go. And that might have been fired a little bit quicker if I didn't have my fat finger in the way of the cocking lever. So, now to start refitting the, all the bits and pieces to the front of the shutter. I had a couple of washers and spacers in there. One of the spacers certainly looked somewhat homemade. One of the screws is definitely not an original. And... Uh, the front plate here was somewhat distorted and it needed to be just given, uh, apply a little bit of body English to it in various places until it fitted it somewhat better and holds nice and firm. There was a little bit of rattle in there previously, now that's just nice and firm, no problem at all. Well I decided I might as well put these lenses back in the uh, shutter body. Now. I don't know, yeah you can see it there on the camera that surface looks like it's got branches all over it that's not branches, that's fungus this is the, the surface we can see this on is the one that uh, 
faces towards the front of the camera, this is the middle component. There's a bit of dust on this rear surface just from handling and sitting around the bench, but that's comparatively clean. Now you might remember that when I took the shutter apart, the rear grip was finger, wasn't even finger tight, it was loose. Suggests to me that somebody had removed the rear grip and they had probably cleaned this glass surface through the shutter, cleaned the rear grip as well, but of course without being able to remove the front grip because the screws were somewhat damaged on the front grip, they didn't have access to this surface. Now that brings into the question the possibility that the diaphragm, which was fairly ruined because the blades were all displaced, were those blades pulled out of position because they were oily and that they'd been forced? Or were they, were they pushed out of position by someone poking and prodding in there with a uh, cotton bud trying to clean lenses? I don't suppose we'll ever know. Anyway, I've got to clean this lens, see what I can do with it. First, I want to remove all the grease from around the inside of this thread here where the front group screws into it. I've got to get rid of any oil and rubbish off there before I start cleaning the glass surface. Otherwise, I'll just start spreading it all around the place. So I'll get onto that. So I've just got some naphtha on a cotton bud here. Oh, excuse me, someone at the door. That's a beautiful lacework tracery there. It's just a shame that it's supposed to be a clear lens instead of that uh, wonderful lacework. Well, I've got all the grease and rubbish off this now, so all I've got to do is have a go at this with some glass cleaner. With a little bit of luck, I'm just using as normal old domestic glass cleaner here, nothing magic. But with a bit of luck, this will clean and the fungus will all go away. If I'm not lucky, it won't. Well, I'd like to say it was disappearing completely, but it isn't. That fungus has etched its way into the coating. Well, it's not coated, of course. This is an uncoated lens. That fungus appears to be etched into the glass. Well, I've cleaned that glass. I've got it as clean as it's possible to get it. The uh, remaining marks in there from that fungus, they're never ever going to come out as far as I can tell. Now it's an interesting effect on the surface of the glass. Remember that this lens was an uncoated lens, but uh, one of the effects that you get sometimes with optical glass is that over time it developed a coating. It uh, presumably it was interaction of the atmosphere and the, and the surface of the glass, and uh, you had an basically it developed its own anti-reflective coating. I believe that's what's happened here because I you can see the colour like a coating on that surface, but of course it's got the the tracery of the fungus is visible in it. I can't decide whether the fungus pre prevented that natural uh, reaction and coating from forming where the fungus is or whether I'm seeing the, exactly the reverse situation. But um, that's definitely it. There's, there's nothing to feel on the glass. Uh, you can sometimes, if there are surface imperfections with something like that, if you take a, a wooden toothpick for example and lightly run it across the surface you can you can very often um, decide that there is a surface imperfection there that it's not not just some residual mark that there's a 
a, a, a chip or a scratch or a, or a bump and you can feel it but there's nothing to feel here so that's a it's a bit of a disappointment I mean everybody likes to have their lenses looking nice and sparkly clear but in terms of seeing through the lens it looks fine looking at the lens it doesn't look very nice still we have to deal with life as we find it I suppose so onwards and upwards <laughs>